love and today I wanted to show you how I made a few of these pendants so you'd have a better idea and they're actually very easy to make and they all start with these new cutters that we have they're called the kaleidoscope cutters and they come four to the pack and each one of the designs is a little different and I just kinda wanted to say a little bit about these cutters because there's a variety of cutters that we do have now but the thing is you can use them straight out of the pack but really the idea of them is to just embellish on them and make them your own <clears throat> excuse me this is what I mean by it you can take them straight out of the pack you know and stamp into clay add a little powder pigments and you have something that's very nice these are just a few of them here I mean they're they're very nice and actually this is the other one straight out of the pack this one I added some liquid clay to so it has some shine so that's it, just adding a little pan pastels or powdered pigments, and you can make something really nice. But the thing is, and really the idea is to take those these cutters and go and think outside of the box. And think how, okay, yes, these could be the base of my design, but what can I do to make it even more spectacular? You know, this one here, for instance, is great. You know, it's straight out of this cutter, and you've got it just with the little pan pastels. But here, I've taken it another step further, whereas I put it over a lentil bead that I made that I silk screened, and I've laid that over it, and I've added this round bit about, about here, and I put a crystal in the middle, and then I used my knitting needle to make these little indents all the way around, and then I used one of these little poker things to make these little dots, and I did this here as well, and added some powdered pigments. So it was very simple to make. It wasn't a whole lot more work than doing something like this, but look at what a difference, you know, a little extra detail makes. So what I'm saying is, you know, really think about how you can change this up and use these as a, as a base for your design rather than the entire design. Certainly you can do something just like this if that's all you want. I mean, it's beautiful in its own, but when you take it a few extra steps, you can really do a lot more. So that's that one. And then, Here's this one here, which is just straight out of the cutter, which is this cutter here. And I added some pan pastels to it, real pretty on its own. Added a little hole, because um, all these are going to be pendants. They're about two inches, real nice size for a pendant. And then I added some liquid clay over it. But, as you can see on this one, I went even more. I took some little balls of clay and placed it around a center, which was a dome. And I created the dome by basically putting a little bit of clay into this mold. But you can do, you can create a dome yourself. But I did use this mold. It was easy. Pushed it in a little bit of clay because I didn't need too much. And then, you know, pop it out of the mold. Th these are um, molds by Sculpey. And it's part of their new collection. Actually, there was two. There was this one here and this one. This is more like a bezel. Uh, it has like a... a a, round, a part that goes around and then the inside. So these are two different molds that they now are having on the market. The thing is, they're silicone. I think they're silicone, but they're not as flexible as you would expect them to be. They're a little harder plastic, which does make it a little harder to get some of the molds out. Um, but what you can do is you can bake your clay in the mold and then pop it out and it comes out real easy. But in the raw form, sometimes it's a little harder to get out of these molds. So anyways, that's how I made the middle part like a cabochon, by putting it into there. And then I used powder pigments around to decorate it. And then I used some cane slices and just put them in where I thought it would be really pretty. And it wasn't a lot more work. I mean, very little work. I made a few balls. I added some cane slices and then put a middle. But look at what a difference a little bit, a little extra does. So that's what I want you to do is to think outside of the box and, and really kind of come up with interesting ways to use them. And you'll see, it just makes it a, a, a lot different. So here's, here's just one I did and what I, I took that same poker. I poked my little dots here. I made a little thing from the middle, poke some more dots, and add a little crystal in the center. So really, not a lot of work at all for that as well. Now, this one here is actually a version of this. So what I did for this one, as you can see, I didn't put the, the little dots 
like on this one. I left it as is and added some powdered pigments around here. And I took a cane slice, okay? And what I did was I took a little cookie cutter and Sculpey has these graduated cookie cutters and this was the perfect size, I thought, for the middle. So I just created it. I'll show you in a minute here, but I created the, it was this one. I created the piece like that. And then I took the cookie cutter and cut out the middle. And here's the middle, which would make a really cute earring decorated up. So you can do, you can still use the middle. You know, the middle was inside of there like so. So you can see that it was the same actual cutter. So I cut the middle out and instead came from the back, placed a cane slice I made, and then added liquid clay in that pool. So I've created some depth. So I'll have some pictures of these on the blog at polymerclaytv.com so you can check them out and real simple but yet you know super effective and they look completely different you wouldn't even know they came from the same cutter so that's another idea there and then there's this one which is just this plain cutter which isn't much you know on its own it doesn't have a whole lot of detail but you curl up the edges you add a little glass cabochon to the middle and then I took these Kemper cutters and these are Kemper cutters and I found a little small flower I liked which is like this and I just cut it out and placed them around the cabochon which actually helped to anchor the cabochon a little so that was nice but and then I bent up the edges so it gave it more of a, a little bit of a realistic look and these are just gorgeous pendants and super super sized for the pendants I think <coughs> excuse me super super good size for a pendant I really like them, you know, and I think you will too. And like I said, there's four in the set. And let me show you making one now. So there's the gist of that, and you, and you have an idea of the possibilities. But these cutters, you can't really go too thin with them if you want the design to show up. If you want all these details, you can't go too thin with your clay. So you have to go at number one on your pasta machine. So these are not spring activated, they're more like a cookie cutter. So they're not plungers like some of the other ones that we have in the shop. So you would use it just like a cookie cutter. You can press down and I like to give it a nice little press. You actually can add a little water to it so it doesn't stick if you want, if it's really warm. Actually I didn't get a good impression there. Let me try it again. Actually, I have another piece of clay right here. So, push down. You might, I like to rock it back and forth so that I get a nice impression, but you don't want to rock it too much, then you get, you know, double the impression. And now it's stuck. So, let me pull it out. And I didn't use any water. So, there you have it. There's the design. I could have got a little more on that end but it didn't work out so you know you might have to have the clay a little thicker because the thickness is really what what you need for these particular cutters because if it's too thin there's not enough clay for it to go up into the different you know because these are little in, indented so just think about that so here's how I did the other one with the cane slice I just cut out the center and then I back that center with a cane slice. But let me show you something else. What about over a silk screen? How cool would that look? Okay, so you could silk screen like a, and I showed how to silk screen these on a, a video a few weeks ago. So just check out the channel. I'll, I'll put a link here too as well so you can find it easier. But you can create these domes and then you can make that the center of some of your flowers as well just by cutting it out with a cookie cutter and the possibilities are endless. I mean, you could do a stamped image in the middle, you, anything you want, and then you would just decorate this any way you want with powdered pigments, with pan pastels, whatever you like. But you see how it creates like a little well right here? And that's what I did with this one. I filled the little well with some liquid clay. So it has more of like a depth and like a glass look. So that's a possibility for that too but super super cute and super super easy to do so let's see let's 
Let me move that aside and start over here. Get my clay mixed up. And I'll show you this other one. So again, I'm gonna go number one, you know, the thickest setting on my pasta machine. If you don't have a pasta machine, then you know, you just you want about that thick. And that should be enough. So let me show you this one. This was the this cookie cutter. And straight down, give it a little push, a little wiggle, and lift up. And if the design doesn't cut out, then you want to use either a blade or your X-Acto blade. And actually, this thing I'm working on, I don't want to cut, so I would do it on, on um, a tile or something. And you just go around and you would cut it all the way out. I'm not going to do a perfect here because we don't have a lot of time. But I'm going to do a rough cut here so you can see how I created the other, how I created that. So, your blade will work just as well, you know, it's just easier to get into some of these little corners with an X-Acto. This makes your life easier, so if you have an X-Acto blade, use it. Or a little, like, single-edged blade is good, too. So while I'm doing this, I just want to announce, we had a newsletter go out this past week. If you're not signed up for the newsletter, make sure to do so. And you can do that either at PolymerClayTV.com or PolymerClayAdventure.com. And when you sign up for the news, actually PolymerClayTV.com is the newsletter, PolymerClayAdventures for something else that we have going on. But if you sign up for the newsletter, you know, we often have specials. We have contests that we share with you in there. So we had a, we had a survey this week. And we wanted to know what you guys wanted to have a tutorial of, you know, what you would most want a tutorial of. And we gave three options. Uh, and one of them happened to be liquid clay and so we've decided that our next tutorial that we're going to be doing is on liquid clay because that was the most popular and so anybody who answered the survey got entered into the contest to win one of our tutorials so I wanted to congratulate Kathy and Kathy we will be in touch so that you can claim your tutorial and Kathy her email, or rather her handle, starts with C-B-R-O-T-H, and that'll help you know that you're the winner. But we will be in touch with you, and uh, so you can claim your prize. So, okay, so I have this mostly cut out. This is not perfect, so don't expect it to be perfect. I'm just doing this right now to show you, and I don't want to take up all your time while I cut every little last bit away. But you would clean all the edges completely until you're completely happy with how the edges look. And then... We used this little palette, which is a metal palette that now Sculpey is making, and it has the graduated sizes, and that's how we created this half of a lentil bead. We used the cookie cutter, and we cut it out after we silk screened on it, cut it out, and then placed it on here and baked it so that it would be this shape. And like I said, if you want to see how we did that, I'll have a link to the, to the previous video where we did that. So that's what that is. And so I, I, I took a piece of silk screen, as you can see under here, it's already in the dome shape. And I laid this on top, centered it nicely. And now I've created some depth, and I actually wanted my ends to kind of come up a little, so I pushed it down on this tile. See, so it kind of creates more of a, actually I don't have this lined up very well. But you'll get the gist. I'm not going to keep this together like this anyways. This is not ready to go. It's not all cut and cleaned up, but you can you can get the idea. So simple, really simple. And then for the middle part, I just took a little clay and created a flat sheet or actually I'm trying to remember how I did that now that I'm thinking about. It. I don't think I create Oh, I did a dome. Okay. So, I think I did it in this here and I didn't want the full size of the dome because I thought that would be too big so I just kind of came up with whatever amount I wanted and pushed it in to this mold to get a dome shape pulled it out of the mold that came out nicely place it on top like so and then I put my crystal in the middle 
And then beyond, I, I don't have another one of those crystals, so I'm just going to... Actually, this, this looks bigger than what I did, but you'll be able to get the gist of it. And I just went around and used my knitting needle to like poke these edges, like so. Put my crystal in the middle, or you can even put dots or something, you know, that represents a middle for a flower. It doesn't have to be a crystal. It could be a cabochon. It could be anything you want. And then I use these pokers down at each bottom. This poker or whatever you want to call this thing. This tool. Went around. Just added a little extra oomph and texture. And then I textured the edges here. And then I added powder pigments. And it was simple to make. I mean, really easy. What did that take? Three minutes? And then, you know, like I said, you could put the, a crystal in the middle. This is way bigger in the center. I didn't use that size cabochon. I think I must have used the small cabochon. Because this is way too big. I wouldn't use such a big one. But you get the idea. And, and that's how that was created. Just super simple like that. And on the back, so let me give you an idea of that. If you want to make this into a pendant, what you can do is you can make a round ball. Because you could get those bales, but those bales would not really work well on this pendant because of the dome. But you can place a piece of clay behind it that wouldn't necessarily be seen. Okay? And so you would shape it in whatever... Or you can make it as small or as big as you want, obviously. And then you could then poke your hole through that. And now you have a way to hang it. You would fire this again. And you wouldn't see that. You know, it would just lay on your neck, like so. So that's a good way when, you have, when you're just doing, like, a dome shape that you can create a little uh, a back piece that, that you can hang it from. So that's super easy there. Um, I think there's a, this one here. I was just a couple cane slices around, added around, and, and I just took little... I Actually, these are, believe it or not, were brown clay, and I just took a little ball and went all the way around it, around the dome that I created and then same thing I used this little tool and poked a little hole and that's how I got that little piece right there and super simple and then I cut some cane slices and I just wanted to mention this if you if you've never cut a cane before what you want to do is you want to use a really sharp blade and you want to use both of your hands you don't want to just sit there and cut like this because you don't have as much control as you would when you cut with two hands. So you would go straight down like so and you can cut off slices like that. And you can get really thin slices or if you need a thicker slice. These cane, this cane is probably 10 years old at least. But you know, real easy to do. Just make sure to use both your hands and you can get a nice even slice. So I think that's about it. I think I showed you or gave you an idea of how I made every one of these. I would love to see what you guys make. So if you join us at polymerclayadventure.com and join the community, you can upload photos of the different things you've made and, and you know, share ideas and post photos um, to the board there. And uh, we'd love to see what you make. So the cutters are now available in our shop. and. Uh, if you want to check them out, we have tons of cutters now. We keep adding, so there's always something new to check out. And like I said, just think outside the box and think of different ways to use them rather than just a straight cookie cutter. I mean, that's great, and actually if you need something fast, say you needed um, to make like a napkin ring holder, you know, picture a napkin ring holder. Okay, so here's my napkin, and I rolled it up. Okay. <laughs> and and you made the napkin ring holder like that, straight out of the thing. It's cute, you know, if you needed a bunch of them for a holiday or something like that. There's, it's not a lot of work. You can make those real fast. But if you wanted to make a beautiful pendant or something like that, then you could take extra time and just, you know, step outside the box with it. You know, it gives you options where you can use it straight, straight like this or use it as a base to add to. So just have fun with it, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.